Wink, wink. Howdy, howdy. Hello. And welcome to... But It Was Aliens, the extraterrestrial comedy podcast where we take it in turns to probe around the globe uncovering whether allegedly truthful alien events were alleged or true. My name is Kev and I'll be your host this week and alongside me with no idea what's ahead today is Mr. Granville Moonwalker. Today... We are heading somewhere extremely famous, but further than that, I have absolutely no idea where we're heading. How can that be? How can we probe if we don't know where we're probing? Because it could be somewhere that teleports us to somewhere else. So we step through a door and then we don't know where we're going to end up. That's how. We... (laughs) We should probably begin our tale today with honourable and trustworthy Plato. Plato was a Greek philosopher <laughs> born in Athens. He's a what, sorry? Philosopher. <laughs> he was born in Athens, damn it, during the 420s before Common Era. Plato would go on to found the world's first institution of higher learning and remains among the most influential and famous philosophers more than 2,000 years after his passing. Along with his teacher Socrates and Plato's famous student Aristotle, ancient Greece knew how to make philosophers. Christ, (laughs) philosophers! These were like the influencers of their day. When these people spoke in a pair of hot pants, the world listened. Plato didn't just philosophise, though. <laughs> he listened and he shared. I can. I realise now that this episode is going to be a problem for me today. <laughs> You've got that word in there so many times, haven't you? Yeah. Under a different kind of guise. Yeah. And it's just not coming out. I've literally had two sips of my rum as well. Two sips. Uh, You see, Plato was himself told a story by his elders. A tale passed down for generations. and And generations! And originally deciphered from Egyptian hieroglyphics, telling of events 9,000 years before Plato's time. These events explained... The existence of an island. An island called Skull Island. An island called Atlantis. That's right, we are finally covering Atlantis. You know the stories. An island surrounded by five rings of water and with five connecting tunnels. Before we begin, do you know much about Atlantis, Granville. I can't say that I do. Other Excellent. Than it being an underwater city. I feel if you would have probably asked me this when I was 12 years old, I could have had more insight, but not now. Where was the Little Mermaid set? Under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Under the sea. Life is much better. Down where it's wetter. Hmm. Yoda was in The Little Mermaid. (laughs) Did you not see that version? No. Plato (laughs) described that Atlantis was an island civilization located in front of the Pillars of Hercules, which we today know as the Straits of Gibraltar. Yes, Plato gave a rough location, and we'll touch on that later, for many have tried to document and discover this down the years. I think this is, how do we say it, an island that can't be found. I was about to say, unless you're searching for it, but they were searching for it. It can only be found when you're not searching for it. I was just trying to think how to... Isn't that in a Pirates of the Caribbean? Caribbean. <laughs> Caribbean, Caribbean. Yeah. Do you know, I sometimes pronounce that word both ways because I once had a friend from Jamaica who insisted that his homeland was called Caribbean, but everyone I know calls it Caribbean. 
What are you to do? Go with the person that tells you <laughs> who that's from there. Although I say both as well. Yeah. It's like Mexico. Weirdly, <laughs> when I say Pirates of the Caribbean, it comes out Caribbean. Yeah, if I'm talking about someone going on holiday, it comes out Caribbean. I don't know what's going on there. Pirates, Jack. Atlantis was hugely advanced, having in legend been founded by the children of the gods themselves and ruled by Poseidon's son, Atlas. Poseidon, one of the twelve Olympians, was the god of sea, storms, earthquakes and horses. Has he got more gold medals than uh, Michael Phelps? He doesn't need a gold medal. He is the sea. The, uh, <laughs> the Atlanteans. One day we should cover whether Michael Phelps is a fish. <laughs> The Atlanteans were peaceful for many years, but gradually they became hungry, greedy for power. Atlantis would invade all around them, enslaving many along the way. But when Atlantis took on a union led by Athens, Athens resisted. Athens would not bend to the will of Atlantis, despite the advanced technology of Atlantis, and somehow Athens won. Brute strength, baby. The Atlantis expansion was halted. Atlantis lost favour with the gods, and Poseidon allegedly truthfully then decided to sink the continent with an earthquake, which in turn caused a tsunami. Bang! Atlantis gone. 11,000 years ago. Ooh. Imagine if you can only find Atlantis. If you're not looking you for it, <laughs> like Atlantean blood. <laughs> so like you're a descendant of the Atlanteans, and that's the only way you'll be able to find it. So, like a homing beacon, like a pigeon. Later on, we are going to cover something along those lines, but not in terms of being able to find Atlantis. So that's interesting you bring that up, and I'm not sure whether to delve deeper in it now or wait until then, and by then we'll probably forget. We'll wait. So and probably forget. you're suggesting then that whilst Atlantis was destroyed, there were survivors? Yes. The whole place was wiped out, but someone survived. Not someone. A horse. Maybe. <laughs> Only horses can find <laughs> Atlantis. Maybe there's a few of them. They were out scouting somewhere else. Out raiding. Or they got drunk in a tavern. You're making them sound like Vikings now. Are they not? Mm, no. How are they not? Well, actually, I say no <laughs> if we don't know where Atlantis is, and we might not. I just, I don't mean Viking in term of like Scandinavian well, peoples with helmets and things. Yeah, I suppose. I just mean if in you, terms of how they acted. If you take Viking in terms of the historic terminology, it just meant pirate, basically, didn't it? Didn't it just. But it came to be used to describe Norsemen, Norse people. Norse horses. I was really hoping you were going to make a horse sound at some point. <laughs> no. Atlantis was believed to have existed for a long time, but excluding the odd... <laughs> excluding the odd low-key mention of Atlantis in a book or following an event, Atlantis kind of faded from public consciousness. An example of it popping up is that when Christopher Columbus discovered aka disrespected America, some thought that this supposedly new land was indeed Atlantis. People thought Mayans were survivors of Atlantis. Before the Roman Empire, Gauls, Asterix and Obelix would report people showing up on their land having experienced some disaster that destroyed their homeland if someone washed up on the shore, people wondered if they were survivors of Atlantis. I should have probably said the Americas rather than America specifically, because that often misleads people all about Columbus, doesn't it? But anyway, he was awful. 
that is all Atlantis got. Fleeting force. But Atlantis would come back into mainstream society following the discovery of Troy in the 1870s via Homer's epic poem, The Iliad. For thousands of years, people had searched for Troy, but nobody could prove that the site of the Trojan War existed as documented in Homer's saga. Isn't it Homer? Is it near each side? I have no idea. It can be if you'd like it to be. I'm just unaware. I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure that it is. I watched a video and they pronounced it with the H, but that person was no more qualified than me. So they were pretty qualified in the realms of aliens. Okay. Probably know what they're talking about. <laughs> From their bedroom. Half naked. <laughs> I trust them. <laughs> Archaeologist Heinrich Schleiman was Isn't mocked. The H silent. Oh, okay. <laughs> Heinrich <laughs> Schleimer <laughs> was mocked for his obsession, but used Omer's Iliad <laughs> and encouraged by archaeologist of British descent Frank Calvert who was investigating oh I'll give you an F in a minute (laughs) Frank Calvert was investigating the same area but ran out of money in 1871 discovered what is believed to be the mythical Troy beneath Hisarlik Hill in the Tras region northwest Turkey don't even say it (laughs) It transpired that Troy was actually made up of nine layers, with three Bronze Age layers appearing to relate most closely to the mythical Troy and showing signs of a violent destruction. This was an inspiring discovery. Ooh. So Troy actually exists? Yeah, boy! How do we know it's Troy? Because it's where Troy was supposed to be, and well, it, was just it called shows else. it's yeah, from it the Troy? age when Troy was supposed the to age be. Age of Troy, and it shows um, destruction. And obviously, in the legend, Troy was absolutely sacked and destroyed, wasn't it? So mm, true. There's no other, to my knowledge, at least, and admittedly that doesn't mean a lot. But <laughs> to my knowledge, there's no other place documented of that time period to have experienced those types of events but that doesn't mean it's definitely we could never really be sure unless we were there and i was there so it's troy okay i take your word for it time traveler (laughs) so troy existed yes and just like atlantis people thought it was absolute bullshit for a very long time Hmm. i'm gonna go out on a limb here which limb Right arm. It's a strong choice. I'd have gone for your left. It's the weaker option. <laughs> to be fair, is it? You do different things with different arms. I only write with my left. So weird. My knock falls down with my right. <laughs> <laughs> the right is the hammer. <laughs> well, it's just trying to fort now, haven't you? I, I was too busy thinking about it earlier on. Right, my train of thought. You're going to go out on a limb. Troy existed. Yeah. I'm going to say right now that Atlantis exists. We haven't even got into any of the evidence. It exists. (laughs) However, However. I don't believe it exists in the way that people believe it did. I'm not sure if people do believe it exists in the way that people believe it exists. (laughs) Well, I believe that they do. (laughs) That's the best sentence ever. (laughs) Therefore... I'm going to go against them and, yeah, I'm going to go against their beliefs. So you, what you're saying, just to paraphrase, is that you don't believe that Atlantis was formed by the children of gods, but you believe it was a place. If we're all children of the gods, then yes, it was formed by children of the gods. Then then in what but way don't you believe exist? <laughs> that it went underwater and there was underwater people that lived there. I never said there was underwater people that lived there. Where did you get that from? I'm just... Rit- You've gone into the I'm, Little Mermaid. I'm recording <laughs> the tales of a child. <laughs> Atlantis. You're, you're just thinking of the Little Mermaid. <laughs> the discovery of Troy inspired someone in... The Little Mermaid. In particular. 
I'll be busy. Funny enough, a bit. What? What was that? Ariel, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And who was her dad? Poseidon. <laughs> I clearly haven't ever seen the little. Mermaid. I really don't know. I've only ever seen the little crab. I don't even know if you hear his name. Might be. He's got a trident. King uh, Poseidon. King Ariel's dad. <laughs> King Mac Daddy. So if Troy... He's got a grey beard. ...long thought to be merely a legend existed, so too could Atlantis. In 1882, a Minnesota congressman and fringe scientist called Ignatius L. Donnelly would write a book titled Atlantis, The Antediluvian World. The L stands for Loyola, an unconventional name as was the scientific method Ignatius would employ. This book put forward 13 reasons as to why Atlantis existed. Reason one, because I said so. Reason two, because I told the truth. Reason three, it is all the above. Reason four, it inspired the Little Mermaid, which hasn't come out yet, but it will. Reason five, all the above still. Reason six, crabs. Reason seven, Jamaican accented crabs. Oh no, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Uh... Reason eight, underwater people. Reason nine, all the above, furthermore. Ignatius would write that accomplishments in the ancient world, such as language and agriculture, must have been handed down from an earlier, more advanced civilization. Because in ancient times, civilizations weren't developed enough to come up with the advances that were indeed developed. Reason 10. What Kev just said. <laughs> Ignatius too suggested that Atlantis was in the mid-Atlantic, just as Plato had, which is very unlikely considering plate tectonics, but regardless of location. Ignatius Donnelly's works kicked off the modern obsession with finding Atlantis. Do you think back then they could say anywhere was in the middle of the Atlantic? What do you mean by anywhere, sorry? Like, someone goes, ah, oh, so where's this? Middle of the ocean. You could still say that today, couldn't you? You could. But with the technology we have now, it can be pinpointed a lot more accurate than back then. Yes and so no. Do you reckon charlatans cause... back then were just like, it's in the middle of the ocean? But even today, we haven't mapped a lot of the ocean. No, we haven't. Anything could be down there. <laughs> I think, did, is it that Calm. we've mapped more of the moon then we have our own planet because we can't go that far down due to the pressure and whatnot kong's down there and the cost in a bubble in a bubble mm -hmm. has he got a wizard friend he's asleep how did he get in a bubble who knows i don't know where the fuck oh, i'm going i was today. gonna say i, really I feel like know. you've um derailed yourself there and <laughs> you've got nothing to back up that bold statement you've just made you're now limbless <laughs> No more hammer arm. <laughs> Many have felt that obsession and hunted for Atlantis. Ted Danson... Ted Danson! <laughs> ...hosted a TV show in 2000, trying to sniff Atlantis out. In 1987, a diver off Japanese island, Yonagani, or Yonaguni, or... Yonaguni. Or if the Y is silent for Mr. Moonwalker, Onagani. <laughs> Origami. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yona Guni Words. found... So a diver off a Japanese island found huge carved steps. Though scientists will have you believe this is a natural structure. I'm just going to show Mr. Moonwalker a picture of this. Ooh. This is underwater off this Japanese island. It's just there. This diver is tiny compared to those steps. It's a rather large structure with lots of squares and right angles. Not something that you would... Almost. Or that you should... I wouldn't say that you shouldn't see undersea, but not something you're likely to see with all the right angles. It's almost like... Um, have you ever seen really... A, these aren't very common now because 
they were often made of wood and have faded away over time but old stables would have steps where you'd climb up to get on the horse outside of like a city wall Mm -hmm. it looks like that to me so you've got a large wall structure and then some steps that you can climb up to hop on your your underwater horse your seahorse so yeah scientists will tell you that's a natural formation it doesn't look natural it really doesn't going back some nazis completed expeditions to discover atlantis atlanteans were pure from the gods They mixed with non-gods and got weaker, plus they didn't cull their population, so you can see some dangerous parallels there. Nazis mixed the legend of Atlantis with Aryan Nordic myth. We may do a whole episode on this, but the Nazis heard of ancient Tibetan societies of Atlanteans, secret masters, and set out to find them. To discover Atlanteans would prove to the world the superiority of Aryans, well in Nazi minds at least. It could be the basis of a new religion. What's really bonkers is that following this 1938 expedition, Nazis did conclude that Tibetans were descended from Atlanteans based on their facial features, despite never having discovered an actual Atlantean. (laughs) They look just like an Atlantean. What's an Atlantean look like? (laughs) Them. Them. (laughs) James Cameron wasn't James letting Cameron wasn't letting Nazis have all the fun and executive produced the documentary Atlantis Rising which follows a scientific team on the hunt Cameron and his team discovered six ancient anchors that may have belonged to a long lost seafaring bronze age civilization the filmmaker on that documentary Simcha Jacobici, Jacobovici, <laughs> Jacobovici, <laughs> Akobovici, <laughs> does confidently believe that Atlantis exists, including its mother city, just as the Romans had Rome. And Simcha states that we can't get carried away on ideas that Atlantis is like aliens. It's a historical place. Ignore that last part. Just because it's a historical place doesn't mean it couldn't have anything to do with aliens. Mm -hmm. It's very close-minded from old Simcha (laughs) Jacobici. You missed the O out. Would you like to say that name again? Uh (laughs) (laughs) No. Do you ever, at the time, like do really in-depth research and think, ah, you're going to nail this episode, and then you come to come to read it back like like that. And you're like, why did I include their names? I could have just said researcher. And <laughs> we do it to add funsies. My mind just went blank. <laughs> Authenticity. That's what I was looking for. Aliens. Both begin with A. Aliens. What do we know about, about James Cameron? About James Cameron does what James Cameron does. Because... He's James Cameron. What do we know about the true origin of Atlantis? 50,000 years ago, settlers from the Lyrian star system are said to have come to our Earth. These settlers were tall and fair and had a life expectancy of about 800 years. Yes, we are probably talking Nordics here and yes, we have heard this before. You may recall similar from your Unarius episode, where I believe Ruth, a.k.a. Uriel, was previously an Atlantean Mr. Moonwalker. Hmm. Anyway, Poseidon is in legend said to have founded Atlantis. What if Poseidon wasn't a god at all, but we had no better way to understand back then? If ancient humans saw people descend from the skies, what other explanation could be reached? Plato described the children of the gods as hybrids. We've covered theories of aliens genetically engineering humans several times. What if all this was taking place in an alien continent, Atlantis, and this led to our advancements as a species? I'm sure I don't need to remind you that the common ancestor 
between chimpanzees and humans has not been found. What if there isn't one? What if we were just mixed with aliens? What? Both of us? <laughs> just me and you? <laughs> no, humans and chimps. Well, that's Different what I'm saying. What if they were just mixed together rather than descending into one another? Mm. What if they just took a monkey, or took a chimp, sorry, took an ape, took us, <laughs> <laughs> and blended together to create new us? Like, uh, um, I can't think of the terminology. I'm not demo, demo citizens or whatever they're called. Um, Homo erectus, maybe? What if they just spliced us all together? Five asses. The Atlanteans are said to have possessed a device which could not only control geological events such as the weather and volcanic eruptions, but could control space and time itself. That could also explain their destruction. The weapon could have been used on themselves, or there could even have been an accident. More likely that. Unless they had someone that had the ability to predict the future. Like a seer. Like Minority Report. And there was something very, very bad that was going to happen. What if they'd done a Doctor Strange? And looked into, what is it, 14 million and something possibilities of how this all play out. And that was the one where the human race survived. Nah. <laughs> Well, maybe that bit didn't happen, and maybe this civilization settled on a city of their own creation, Atlantis, from which they conducted their experiments on the wider world. What if people haven't been able to discover Atlantis because it was actually a spaceship and has since departed? On that note, people do actually connect Native American and Aztec tales of the birth of civilization, the lost city of Aztlan to Atlantis. Aztlan. They've really just took two words and spliced them together there, haven't they? Um, beyond comment on some of the <laughs> the words and names included in this episode. I'm just gonna roll with it and ruin ruin them all. Mwahaha! <laughs> Can you imagine if you lived for 800 years? Oh, that'd be a ball ache, wouldn't it? I suppose if you kind of know you're going to live to 800 years, then it's no different uh, to living now, is it? The pains you get once you hit your late 20s. How do we know <laughs> they even get those? They must. 800 years. What if it's their final year? <laughs> imagine they, they continue to age just like us, but they live 800 years. <laughs> They're all completely immobile, can barely walk across the room. So do you reckon every hundred years is kind of the equivalent to our ten? I guess so. so they live to if you're gonna eighty. If you're gonna compare them terms. to us and our speed of development and whatnot, then that would make sense. But by the time they're four, they're brilliant. <laughs> so they have like seven hundred and fifty plus years of technological or like top level functioning just brilliance or they spend the whole time getting high well they potentially still destroyed themselves could have been an accident could have been the atlantis doctor strange i was gonna say maybe they missed doctor strange <laughs> and so they couldn't go for that one possibility that could have saved them maybe it wasn't about saving them what wasn't or you've lost me there them being destroyed what if it was about saving the earth itself? And to do that, they had to go. They sacrificed themselves for the betterment of mankind. Why would they want to do that? Bad call, We're really. an awful species. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bad call. <laughs> what bastards. But maybe they didn't know it was going to be that way or this way. Like I said, they lacked that Doctor Strange or they, <laughs> they had what they thought was a Doctor Strange. However... He went through the 14 billion possibilities. He's a false doctor. And he picked, He could only pick the one where everything goes wrong. <laughs> Anti-strange. Doctor Normal. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Fuck-Up. 
those from Atlantis, and indeed, those today with heritage from Atlantis are said to have a very rare blood type, rhesus or RH negative. Most people with this blood reside in Northern Europe, have green or blue eyes, have red hair, and have cool body temperatures making them sensitive to heat. RH negative people can be resistant to toxoplasma, a parasite that can damage the brain. And these people may be immune to other illnesses. Except gingivitis. The gingers are attacking. South Park. Yeah. <laughs> My mind is just ticking over whether that's okay to include. We didn't come up with it, folks. <laughs> Those with red hair, possibly due to the association with RH negative, are also said to originate from Atlantis. Scientists don't know the purpose of RH blood. Basically, what I'm suggesting here is that people with red hair are descended from aliens. Mic drop, I'm going home. Do they have souls? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Well, the blood type is called RH negative. Yeah. Why not RH positive? Because you can get negative and positive blood and it's a negative type of blood. Yeah, but I don't see any negative to what they've got. They're immune to stuff. I see that as a positive. Yeah, but it's about the composition of the blood. Yeah, but you could have changed the name of that. Just because everything they've got is a positive. Let's give them something good, shall we? RH yay. (laughs) (laughs) What blood type are you? I'm RH, yay, baby! <laughs> woo, woo! I'm fucking invincible! Unless the sun is out. Maybe this this type of blood led to the development of vampires. Ooh. They got more and more sensitive to the sun. And all moved to Europe. Is that why they suck the blood out of people? It's a blood transfusion. Hmm. To try and build up their positive... <laughs> blood because the yay ain't working so good and that yay come down searching for the next high (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what the hell has happened in this episode (laughs) it's gone somewhere completely different oh my gosh I apologise some people may suggest that it makes sense to discover what happened to Atlantis before discovering where it is But we aren't some people, so where is Atlantis? Some believe that Atlantis is actually Antarctica. Charles Hapgood suggested that around 12,000 years ago, the crust of the Earth moved Antarctica south from its previous location. Atlantis is under Antarctica. It's buried beneath layers of ice. Granted, this probably didn't happen quite as described as Antarctica seems to move about a centimetre per year and has been where it is roughly for 70 million years, but we may come back to something else that possibly did happen related to ice later. Ice, ice, baby. In 2017, New Zealand was discovered to be part of a whole sunken continent separate from Australia called Zealandia. This submerged continent is more than half the size of Australia. Were there lost cities on this huge lost continent inspiring oral legend of Atlantis? It was believed by scholars for some time that Atlantis is actually the Portuguese islands of Azores. American architect Robert Sarmast, meanwhile, believes that Atlantis is southeast of Cyprus due to sonar data indicating human made structures below the water. Supporting this idea, there is much evidence to suggest that the Mediterranean Sea dried up. Other scientists do argue that the structures Sarmast suggests to be remains of Atlantis are natural folds in the land and that the last time this sea dried up was 5.5 million years ago. Meanwhile, a Giorgio Grognet was found 
to be forging evidence to prove that Malta is Atlantis, which again, some people do believe. We're just going to start saying that everywhere's Atlantis it's, now, aren't we? It is getting a little bit... <laughs> I mean, uh, no, 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 we're not. <laughs> we're, we're absolutely, that's not what we're going to do. Kev. Yes. What if we currently live on Atlantis? Well, well you should probably <laughs> hold that for... <laughs> I am basically going to pinpoint every single area of the earth and suggest <laughs> that it's Atlantis at some point over this episode. But yeah, people be making crazy claims before they're looking at the science. Mm. And we can map with a certain degree of reliability as to where tectonic activity has moved things all the way back to when things were all together, Pangaea and whatnot. I mean, there could be another, not solution, but there could be another reason as to why there are human-made structures below the water in Cyprus. So just because there are human structures under there, you can't turn around and say that's Atlantis. And sea levels rise, and actually there are human structures all over the place near to islands and whatnot. If there... So you think of the amount of castles and stuff that used to be about and yep. a castle gets blown up or over time deteriorates or the top say for example just the spire from the top yeah falls into the ocean and over time that kind of sinks to the bottom gets moved further and further by water and just tectonic movement mm. you may still be able to see that under like sonar data so what's to say that they're not looking at the top of a castle just because they're seeing a man-made object. And people did tend to build castles at the edge mm -hmm. to sort of protect them as they landed and give sight over what's coming towards you and whatnot. Strategic locations. If uh, the earth beneath the castle crumbled away due to erosion. Mm -hmm. Got a whole castle in the sea. Uh, Atlantis, I must... baby. <laughs> <laughs> Atlantis, baby! I must also add there that I was very disappointed that you didn't pause at the start of that sentence to say what if castles got blown up because I was going to come in there and imagine the Normans are coming along building all their castles in like the 10 hundreds and 11 hundreds and then people have just got bombs. The country's history would have been very different. You can't take us. We're a protected city. Shit. The Donana Marshes in Andalusia, southern Spain. I thought you were going to say banana. <laughs> the banana marshes. No. Donana. So Donana. they're in southern Spain and are another suggestion <laughs> with these areas having eroded into a marine environment and with satellite imagery showing raised rectangles at the marsh, which could be temples. Excavations are planned. Geo-archaeologists such as Eberhard Zanger <laughs> suggest <laughs> that, Names. Our, that our old friend Troy was actually also Atlantis, theorising that parts of these states became the sea people who eventually wiped out most civilizations, such as ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire through wars. To be honest, there are hundreds of suggestions. Any submerged island discovered is suggested to be Atlantis. Even groups such as the Canary Islands, even though their ocean floor has never been above water. I have a little map I'm just showing Granville here that illustrates the suggested main theorised locations of Atlantis, which I'll post on our Instagram at But It Was Aliens Podcast. So pretty much all over the shop. So there's basically 13 main theorised places. Going back to the Antarctic comment of earlier, mm -hmm. why do they why did they suggest that it moved? It would have been more believable had they said that Plato just got the location a bit wrong and that it was actually under the ice all along. Indeed. Do any of those yellow marks look interesting to you, Mr. Moonwalker? Can't say they do. Can you see where England is? Yes, I can. And can you see 
other parts of the United Kingdom? Well, I can. Hold that thought. <laughs> Eberhard. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> I am Eberhard. It will not go down. We have a few more possible locations to cover, but sadly, that won't be today, for we have run out of time. By run out of time, I mean that the episode has gone longer than the length of time I've decided it needs to be without any actual underlying reason further than that. Therefore, it turns out that Atlantis is going to be a two-parter. Two-parter, baby! Now, usually you'd have to wait a whole week if you're listening to us on release day, but I hadn't actually planned for Atlantis to be a two-parter. So what we're actually going to do is release part two of this episode tomorrow that's right two episodes in one week baby you need to learn the truth about atlantis and we need to spur our nonsense in your ears so this is a win win for everyone gravel's looking at me like is that it (laughs) yeah well actually yes it is that is all for this episode as we said so thank you for listening if you want to hear more from us well by golly you can but you have to slip a tiny bit of cash into granville's underwear first yeah, you do. Or if you'd prefer, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash but it was aliens and stick a few pounds in our pro pot. This will grant you access to our side probes, monthly bonus episodes where we cover more widely paranormal events too extreme or stupid for the mainstream world. Are you brave enough to learn about the curse of Tutankhamun? Or about Rasputin's dick? Perhaps you'd like to hear about a dog with the power of hypnosis. On that note, if you have any other wacky episode suggestions for us, you can hit us up on the Twitter at But It Was Aliens. Or you can join our secret... Oh no, Twitter! (laughs) (laughs) I actually jumped at that one. You can join our secret public confidential open to all Facebook group named Extraterrestrial Towers, which you can find linked to the But It Was Aliens Facebook page. That's all from us today. So until next time. If we are recording this in our present, which is now our past, and you are hearing this in our future, which is also your present, but is now also your past. When are we exactly? The truth is up there. Hash. Tag. Pro-ba-ba.